All right. I think that's working. Oh, where we are. Looks like we are live. So I will we go are. ahead. And now you've got that cross posted, right? So I'm going to post this to my personal feed as well. We want to get this interview up there. So we want everybody, we want everyone to see this one. This is a big day today. Very special episode. Very big day. We're, we're on a whole new day for this one. That's how special this one is. <laughs> we're two days early and we're coming at you again in two more days. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we even have a special, special guest with us today. Miss is always good live on camera. I had to. That's how special July 13th is for our one and only Dr. Travis G. Perry. Absolutely. Absolutely. We want to welcome everybody to a special edition of the Make Time, Make Sales show, where we are here to help you learn the art of productivity and influence so that you can rise above the challenge. I'm excited not only to have Mrs. Always Good live on camera with us, but again, I am your host, Mr. Always Good, with my wonderful co-host. And today, our special interview. And yes. Dr. Travis friend, Dr. Guys. Travis Perry. And friend. <laughs> Absolutely. And just in case anybody doesn't know, Dr. Travis Perry is the founder of the Make Time Institute. He's earned several degrees in family and social science to better understand goal achievement and family relationship. He helps business owners and financial professionals achieve work-life balance. More importantly, he is a father of six incredible children and the husband to one amazing and talented wife of almost 18 years years that may be your best accomplishment sir <laughs> absolutely and, and and of course congratulations are in order for you today as your book pre-order is live today achieving balance and that Woo! is what we are here to talk about today it is here and it's already climbing up on the best-selling charts there on amazon so i'm, I'm really excited we have there were some really great names so thank you guys for interviewing me today Absolutely. You're welcome. So Travis, first and foremost, tell us where people need to go to yeah. lock in this special one day only price. So people ask me all the time, like Travis, how can I support you? And I say, no, today is the pre-order day. Support me, get this to the number one best-selling spot. So we can grab that badge and say number one best-selling book. Um, that is the best thing they can do today. It's 99 cents. So it's basically free. You don't have 99 <laughs> cents goodness um you know it's really <laughs> just getting people to make the time for it right hey just take five minutes and get it done so go to travis perry with an a.com forward slash book or forward slash free book and they can scroll down click on get the book and if they go ahead and, and select get the bonuses they'll be put into a drawing to get a handmade clock from the make time institute my son does these awesome <laughs> handmade clocks uh, these make time clocks you can see one hanging on my wall and it's just a phenomenal gift i'm gonna give five of them away today so i'm, I'm really excited to talk to you guys more about this absolutely absolutely travis in fact uh, i want to be able to show everybody exactly what we were talking about here because i was waiting i've been waiting all day <laughs> because i wanted to be able to order it live with everyone here with us so that they could walk through the experience with me so they can know what to expect i thought that might be helpful for you too uh, to, to get it out to the other people there. Um, only issue I'm having a little trouble right now sharing my screen, but we're going to get that corrected. <laughs> well, you know what? Let's talk to people about why you're in such a hurry to lock in your price, Joe. Let's talk to, to Travis about what makes this book so special. You know, that is the best question ever. I will tell you, I've been wanting to do this book for a very long time, but probably the passion, the reason behind this is my father at age 49 was on a mountain bike ride and keeled over dead drop dead. Um, no warnings. Nobody knew. He was even on a ride with his best, one of his best friends who was an EMT, tried to resuscitate him. Nothing. Nothing worked. Nothing helped. He was one month away from being 50 years old. We were planning his birthday. We were planning these surprise things we were going to do. And honestly, I hadn't seen him in about six months. And when my mom called me that day, she called to tell me, um, I had about six other messages. People call me one after another after another. And I was like, whoa, something's not good. Um, something is not right. And so when she called me and I, I got the message, you know, I heard that dad went into cardiac arrest and he was at the hospital. And the first thing that came through my mind was, 
Dad's superhuman. He's healthy. He rides his mountain bike. He was on his mountain bike at the time. He rides 200 miles uh, a week on his road ride. And I thought, he's going to be just fine. There's just some weird little thing. Um, well, after not hearing from anybody for hours, I finally got word that no, dad, dad passed away. He passed away like within seconds on his mountain bike ride. And there was nothing any, any of us could do. That sent me on a journey, um, a health journey, a spiritual journey um, that helped me figure out what am I supposed to be doing with my life? Am I really where I should be? In fact, I got up to give the final talk at my father's funeral with about a thousand plus people standing room only in, in this church in the chapel. And it was so difficult. I had a talk prepared. I was ready to go. But when I got up there and just saw people, the first thing I could say was, wow, so many people, uh, just incredible. And then after that experience, I wondered, you know, would there be people like that for me at my funeral? Do people really care? Do I have friends like my dad did, work associates, family, church friends? Did I have an impact? Will I have an impact? And I can tell you guys right now, my life was not in a place where I could say at 26 years old that I made an impact. Um, probably, you know what, Melanie, you, the, you exactly, you hit the nail on the head. The best thing I've ever done was marry my wife, get her to marry me. <laughs> that was the best time and the best sale that I've ever made. And uh, you know, I just, it's customer service from here, right? It's just keep, you know, help, helping her stay happy with the choice that she made. And, and I can, I can attest to you that she's been <laughs> with me along through this process. But since then I studied stress and studied why, um, you know, heart attack. I was, uh, um, involved with the American Heart Association. I helped volunteer. I organized events and I started to realize that there's this huge thing around heart attack, heart failure, heart disease. It's the number one killer in the United States. And yet, we um, tend to talk about um, uh, med meds and, and going to your doctor and getting checkups. All that might be helpful, but the root cause, what I found, and for many entrepreneurs and business owners, which my dad was, that's a very successful one, is work-life balance. It's the stress that is in your work, you bring home or you take from home, bring to work, and it's this constant tug of war, balancing act that people are struggling with. And I've made that my life's work to figure out what is at the root of this? How can I help people so that I can save lives? Wow. That's, that's amazing. Uh, such a similar story of, you know, when I lost my father, uh, which was 17 years ago on the 11th. And, uh, it was out of nowhere, random, completely random. And I, I tell you, the same, the same things you're talking about. I know for sure that the lack of a work-life balance and, and the amount of stress that he was under on a regular basis, even though he never wanted to show it, I know it was there. You know, as we've gotten older, I understand that it had to have been there. Uh, but it just, it's amazing how those moments, those, those really hard times in our lives can turn around to be one of those things that really springboards us into a, into a new chapter that we can really then find strength from in ways that we never thought were going to be possible. Um, that's, thank you for sharing that story with us. That's just amazing. You know, and it's, it's crazy. I know you had this date planned for a while. You had planned on this July release date, but I got to tell you with the, the onslaught of COVID-19 and, and you guys really touching on that really key point that it's that, that inevitable stress that happens that often changes us for the better I mean, how, how has COVID impacted your release and how much more people are you seeing in need of this advice now? Uh, this has never been more timely. <laughs> um, I can tell you guys, I, I have it. I have my goals over here on the side. I teach people how to set goals, how to achieve them. That's really the whole point, but you can do it in a, in a balanced way. And what is balanced? We'll talk about that. But as I set, set this goal, I finished writing my book. December 31st, 2019, I had the edits. I was ready to go. I made that my goal last year. This year, the goal was I'm going to publish this book. But as COVID-19 started to like loom from China and to Europe, and then I could see it come to the United States, it's like, 
uh, this is mid-February, I started seeing the writing on the wall that business was going down. All of my speaking gigs were getting rescheduled. And I spoke a lot from stage last year, spoken in 12 stages, 14 stages and internationally. And I was, I was loving it. I got some great travel. My wife and I got to see the world and the country. And, um, and I, I started to think, this isn't good. <laughs> my business is built on being on the stage. How can I fix this? How can I do something different? And I thought, Travis, you need to write your book. You need to get it published because you already written it. You need to finish editing it and you need to get it published. And so as I went around and interviewed publishers and got more information, I, I found a publisher that was not just going to help me to publish the book and say, here you go. Here's the paper and, and the cover. But here is the marketing strategy on how to lift your business from where it is to where you want it to go. And quite honestly, people don't understand capitalism, don't understand marketing, don't understand how you promote and sell your business. It's because you believe in it so strongly that you want to help everybody that you can. And that's hopefully the enthusiasm that people get from me is I'm in this to help as many people as possible, workaholics especially, um, who are <laughs> 70 to 90 hours a week. You wouldn't believe how many people I work with that they're there. They think they're working 50 and they're at 70 plus. Um, that puts them in the workaholic category according to the DSM-5 and it's incredible stress because that's all they're doing. But um, I think to answer your question, I didn't know this was going to happen. <laughs> and on March 24th, I decided that I was going to declare to the world, hey, I know we're getting into shutdown mode, but guess what? I'm writing a book. And it sounds kind of, well, that's kind of self-serving, Travis. Eh, not so much. The idea is I'm trying to serve other people in a time where they probably need it the most when work-life balance was bad enough. Now it's turned on its head, right? And you've got working parents who are now at home with children, dealing with daycare or who's going to do what and roles and um, teaching. It's creating, all, <laughs> yeah, it's creating all sorts of problems. And you've got business owners trying to manage employees from a distance. Uh, like work-life balance has never been more important to talk about than now. And I think that's why it's up there on on the best-selling, um, you know, reports right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Already. We're, we're, I mean, we're not, we're barely halfway through the day if you're in the central time zone and we're already, you're already at number four on the list. Number four. So again, let's go back. I want to share this again. I want to again, welcome everybody to the Make Time, Make Sales Show special edition as we are coming to you live with Dr. Travis Perry as the day of his pre-order book launch. Achieving balance. Oh yes, exactly. So here we go. Let's go ahead and start sharing this one. Oh, okay. So Mr. Always Good is going to show us how it's done, people. All right. So first of all, if you to help navigate over to getting the book, go to Travis Perry, P A R R Y dot com forward slash free book. And that's going to take you to this page. Once you're on this page, you click get the book. Get the book. It's a nice big blue button, really easy. Really big and easy. It's gonna take you to this page right here. And here's what I'm gonna do right now. Oh pre order. Oh, one step closer to number one. Boom, we are now pre-ordered. <laughs> it is over with. Now, here's the other part, everyone. Here's what I want you to remember to do, though. Do not forget this little orange box right yeah. here. You see this one that yeah. says, get the bonuses. Click on that and get your bonuses. Seriously, I did, this, I did this this morning. I wanted to make sure to get mine in, lock it in nice and early. And Travis, talk to us a little bit about these bonuses and why you chose the ones you did. I thought I could see the value, but I really love that you were opening up your calendar. And for someone who talks about work-life balance and making time work for you, I thought it was really impressive you were opening up your calendar to offer some people some counseling. Yeah, I appreciate that. So number one, the books are great, right? I've got dozens of them on my little bookshelf here. Um, and some that I've read and some that I haven't, but the ones I read, you know, you hope that you put things into practice. You hope that you actually utilize it. So I wanted to give three bonuses why people are waiting because that pre-order, uh, you're not getting the book today delivered to you. It's going to come in the future. It's helping to support the movement, the Make Time Institute movement of basically saving workaholics lives. And so it's supporting that movement. Um, but in the meantime, while you're waiting, I got three bonuses. One is a 30 minute masterclass. It gives you the five steps to the make time method that we can talk about today. Um, and it gives you these three myths that we'll talk about uh, that people think are, you know, uh, going to help you get balanced. And that is number one, the myth of doing everything now, the myth of productivity alone is the magic pill. And number three, the myth 
of personal development as the end all be all. So we're going to go through those. We, we, we tackle them. And then I give you the five, uh, really the tips that help kind of fill in those holes and really help the, those out there struggling to have a time management system to get one in order. So that's in that first bonus, bonus one, that masterclass. Number Wait, two that's is, just the first bonus? I know. That's just the first bonus. That's it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So talk about content. Like This is just for me, for supporting. I just want to share as much as I humanly can uh, to, for people to support in the movement on, you know, today, pre-order July 13th. Um, and then two is a, is a training. It's about 10 minute training on how to clear up your email inbox. I know mm. from research, inboxing and, you know, your, your emails and your texts are one and two texts are close to, to number to the email, but not, not enough clearly uh, yet to, to make that uh, jump to number one. But those are the boxes that really get people hung up and it costs them anywhere from five to 10% of their productivity on a daily basis. So wow. what I've done is I created a training to help you to master the chaos that is your email inbox. In fact, <laughs> I was interviewed for a podcast the other day and it was my author. <laughs> and I told him about this bonus. And he's like, Travis. And he showed me, he shared with me his screen. <laughs> he had 200,000 unread emails. 200,000. I, I almost hit the floor. Wait, I just hold on. passed out. 200,000. Not 200, not 1,000. 200,000 200, emails. Unread. I'm, I'm calling you 10, out. <laughs> and, and I thought, those aren't being read. No, but two hundred thousand. No. That could occupy a year. I don't know what he's doing, but he's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get my VA to read this and watch it so that you know. Oh my gosh! So he's not making time, Travis. That's what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It was it was pretty hilarious. Um, the third bonus, because I, I know people need this. I, it's the it's the thing that everybody tells them. This is their number one pain point: is email. But two, or the third bonus is uh, on the personal side is how do you get out of work so that you can enjoy vacation? You guys know we've talked about this before on previous episodes of Make Time Make Sales Show um, about getting out, going on vacation. And the, I, I show you in this article three steps of how to do this, but also some research on how important it is because once you leave work and once you get time out and away from the office, it helps you to rejuvenate. It helps you to feel better. And it helps you to come back ready and with better ideas to work in your business. And I think that's what we all need. Otherwise, we get to burnout, don't we? We hit the wall and we don't get back up. Like this is this is a marathon. And we we can die during this burnout. And I think that's the physical health part that woke me when my father passed out and, and died. I, that, that really just shook me. It shook my world. And so I want to help those people to live life, live it. Um, now, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to paint my dad as a, as a workaholic, but I know there was stress there. And I think that's the rabbit hole I went down. I started to see this. And um, I want to help people to get out, go on vacation more, learn to delegate, learn how to process information so that when you leave, you can psychologically check out and you can enjoy it. And then you can come back a lot more fulfilled. So those are the three bonuses just for clicking that uh, orange box that people will get instantly that they can begin to consume right away as my gift to them. Yeah. And that's, thank you for that. Those are incredible bonuses. Very incredible. You know, I think you're right. That's, I know that's why we're talking more about it on Wednesday on the make time, make sales show that playing the long game. And, and I think that last piece of advice you talked about getting out, you know, we have a culture where because we can do more, we're expected to do more. And I think that really weighs on all of our servant leaders out there, the ones who give the most really give of themselves and they aren't encouraged to rejuvenate. And that's so vital to that, that long-term service. I think, I think you nailed it. Um, and that's it. We're, we're a lot of helpers, right? We want to help other people. Mm -hmm. But if we don't help ourselves and we don't make time for ourselves, even the daily things, exercise, eating right. Like I got up this morning, I could have just like been here telling everybody in the world, hey, buy my book, buy my book. I read my scriptures. I prayed. I worked out with my son. He and I were doing sprints down our road and doing a workout regimen that we've created. So, I mean, there's, there's stuff that we did to make sure that I keep my balance and walk my walk. Yeah. And I think it takes a lot less time than people recognize. 
And that's why I love that you talk about making time work for you, because I think people think that that is some mystical, unachievable balance. And we've seen what burnout can do. It can, it can wear on your health and it can take your life completely and it can shorten your life much too early. And it's foundational little things when you make time work for you that you can extend the length of your service. Yes. 100%. Absolutely. 100% on that one, you know, and, and so we have some questions yes. we want to ask. And I'm, sure, I'm hoping that everybody else out there wants to hear the answers to the questions that we have. I think they might. Uh, let us know if you have any other questions also in the comments, please, for all of those who have tuned in or are tuning in again, welcome to the Make Time Make Sales show. We want to be able uh, to hear your feedback too, so that we can hopefully get Dr. Travis Perry to answer some of your questions as well. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Always Good, why don't you start off with the first question, with, with the next question? Okay, so uh, we've touched on this a little bit. One of my favorite quotes from your website is that personal development is not personal. And I know you credit your wife a lot. And that was one thing we've talked about a lot is that as we ventured into this and to really pushing to find meaning in what we do, and we read more personal development books, we went to seminars, we went together and we found that was not consistent among a lot of attendees. And so I, when I read that line, it resonated with me because I do believe that personal development is teamwork, that it's a team sport, and everyone benefits. When you feed into yourself, you feed back to your family, you feed back to your, your, your spouse, and you feed back to your friends even. You give them the gift of being present, of giving more of yourself, more quality. And I think that's what we end up missing when we try to stretch. As we go for quantity, we lack quality. So I wanted you to talk a little bit more about what this entire experience has meant to you as a husband and a father. Yeah, I appreciate that. So yeah, this is myth number three, that personal development is the end all be all. Um, man, I, I want to say that like the very first books and tracks that I, I listened to outside of maybe, you know, scriptures was like Brian Tracy, Dale Carnegie, um, Tony Robbins, like you can't go wrong. Those oh, yeah. guys are pillars, right? And they're phenomenal. So I read, you know, how to win friends and influence people. And oh, I read, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's an all time bestseller, you know, and, and, you know, there's, there's stuff from Brian Tracy, a Canadian who comes out to teach us about sales and persuasion. Just love his stuff. Um, Tony Robbins, we all know Tony Robbins. I know you guys are big fans. So my, my, my thing that I noticed as I was not only um, consuming material about personal development, I was also deep into my psychology degree. And while I was studying psychology, I was looking for stress. I was looking for a mental health. Um, I was looking for physical health and all these <laughs> things that go with it, right? And what I found was that um, while simultaneously while I was doing that, I was finishing my degree, I was actually um, coaching people and do, you know, selling coaching for Dale Carnegie, for others, uh, Nightingale Conant, for other oh, yeah. these big guys um, who, who are you know, in the personal development field. And I found that a lot of the people who would come, Melanie, uh, were female. They would call in, they'd get the coaching, <laughs> they'd want the coaching. Uh, they, they, they actually wanted personal development. I thought, well, what is this? That's weird. That's, you know, check. I started doing my own data collection. And I also found that a lot of people who were doing coaching um, were uh, not very happy with their relationship. Mm. Well, that's interesting. Why, why do they want that? Oh, maybe because they want a supportive someone else to talk to right? So they either, either divorced, they were in a bad relationship or had, you know, were in a relationship that just really wasn't supportive. And so as I started to take, you know, notes on this, I thought, well, marriage, that's, that's, that's gotta be part of the answer here. You've got a lot of marriage therapists who are going to focus on communication and therapy systems. And, and there's a place for that. I understand. And th those are, those are, you know, dysfunctional couples, a lot of the times that need that help. And then there's coaches. There's people who want to help you to, to, you know, to learn some skills like communication and decision making. I understand that that's there as well. And for a period of time, I kind of dabbled in, the, in those areas. Um, but I realized that it was missing out. You kind of, if you're going down the road and your car breaks down, and you, you fall over into the ditch or something. Um, therapy, I view, is getting you out of the ditch and back onto the road. Coaching is all right. You're on the road, you're driving well, let's see how we can speed this up or help you navigate better. Um, and so as I was toying with this, I thought, you know, there's something to having couples 
work this together. And in my last class, while I was simultaneously coming up with this theory, there was a course on motivation. And I thought, okay, great. My last paper, I kid you not, in my psychology, my master's degree, there was a, a, a research article on Maslow. And you guys have heard Maslow's art. Oh, yeah. Hierarchy of yeah. needs. Okay. So down at the bottom, you know, basic needs. Food <laughs> alive, you know, eat, food, clothing, shelter. And as you go up, you, you reach something called, um, uh, oh, my goodness, what is the very top? I just had a, a brain freeze. Um Anyway, it's self-actualization. Self actualization. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for help me find that thought, Melanie. So at the very top is the self-actualization. And this is this term that back in the 1950s, Maslow theorized, did not prove, theorized. <laughs> Maybe we could achieve. Later on in life, he actually uh, um, said that most of us actually don't ever get there. But it's yeah. this yeah. idea that we've got to find our calling in life. And if we're not living that calling, that somehow our lives are not valuable like and that was i think that's kind of the turn off for a lot of people it's like this perfection where they're trying to hit um well it turns out that in 2009 um this research came out it was right hot off the journals you know since everybody's reading academic journals these days uh, oh, yeah. not so much but it, it struck me because i was searching and it was this revised maslow's model and i thought wait a minute what uh-huh these psychologists, have you seen this, Melanie? These yeah. psychologists had, had redid Maslow's model. And I thought, whoa, how timely is that? Like, I'm never going to get back on and do research again, or so I thought. And as I was reading this article, it, they actually found, and these weren't family people, these are psychologists. They found that at, um, Maslow was sort of right. But at the very top, it's not self-actualization, that instead, it's actually having a spouse or a life partner and having that committed person to be happy with you. <laughs> and then at the very top, parenting was the number one motivator. So I thought out of everything that we do, motivation to continue actually isn't necessarily from within. You need it. I think you do need that, the power within, right? I get it. But mm -hmm. you also need that external frame, like the two of you, you're couplepreneurs. You do stuff together, you work together makes sense and so I started to test this and I did my PhD program and this is why I did it I wanted to test my theory all good scientists will go back to academia yes. <laughs> study stats and test it and I found that it's true that couples married couples I tested were married couples that had similar values and beliefs and actually the way I measured it, and this is kind of geeky, but I'll, I'll be done with research after this, I promise, <laughs> um, was that we actually measured how close their values were. And we found a group of those who had really, really close values and those who didn't. And we found that the ones that had closer values, significantly different than the ones that didn't, um, and that they had better um, happiness, reports of happiness in, uh, psychologically, their marriage was more satisfying to them, and it was indirectly related to better financial stability. Mm. Who doesn't want better health, better <laughs> relationships, and more money? You, you tell me. I haven't met a single person in my life that doesn't want all three of those more in abundance than they currently have. <laughs> And it doesn't matter how much of an abundance they have of those. They yeah. want more of those. They want it deeper. It's Yeah, the Richer. deeper it can be. The more it can be, it's a, what, wealth versus riches, right? They want to be wealthy yes. in those things, not yes. rich in those things. And that yes. that's amazing. It's amazing, you know, to, to hear that because I, I think a lot of people also think about that self-actualization as, as we had all learned about it before and thought, yeah. you know, well, I don't know how to find my purpose what is the reason that i'm here yep. and and i think that that stopped a lot of people from even trying to go to that next level of it because it became this like a not fully formed thought in their head like it was something that was fleeting like it was just this oh that's what it is cool great i'm never gonna get there by yeah they get overwhelmed by that idea and i, mm. I love that you touched on on maslow because it it's so true that the more we connect with other people, the more we are, are actualized as humans. And I think ultimately we will discover another pyramid. That is my theory. I'm throwing that out there now that it will be the self-fulfillment period pyramid. 
like that maybe it won't be maslow obviously but i think we can build on that 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 is the next level when you achieve balance the the nugget that comes from that is not that you're self actualized it's that you are fulfilled that yes. the more we give the more we receive and that means of ourselves Mm -hmm. And that's what real fulfillment is. That's why I think you found like when you saw that revision, it's that marriage and parenthood are the things that make us because they connect us to the greater fiber of the universe. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I and, agree with you there. And then, then I tested this further and found that most human developmentalists would agree with me. You don't develop on your own. No man is an island. No man. <laughs> and if you even think about this, Self-help books of which, you know, I would, I would ascertain that this is a little bit of that, right? Um, <laughs> self-help, is that true? Is this really self-help or did an author write this? And is that therefore a relationship that you then paid for to have? And most people need that relationship. So even if, you, if, if you're not married, well, what do I do, Travis? People ask me all the time. That's okay. Find someone that can help you. It can be a mentor. You could hire a coach. Yes, that's important. But I will tell you, I think the coaching industry, um, even though I, I do coach, my whole process is to teach couples how to coach each other so they don't need me any longer. I literally <laughs> work myself out of a job. And I think oh, that yeah. that's effective and it works and, and couples like that. Oh, that is the goal of most coaches is to coach you to the point where you don't need us anymore. I mean, that's certainly what we always hope for is like, we don't want to fish for you. We want to teach you to fish so that you can go out and find your own journey from there, you know, and, Absolutely. and I, that's why I love your special offers for this book that you've offered so much of yourself and these bonuses, because that is going to be a relationship. It doesn't matter if you are alone. There are people out there who are outstretching their hands and you've really gone above and beyond with this offer for achieving balance. It's just incredible. And we touched on it a little bit, but I wanted to ask a big question for me. Yeah. You know, what are the common signs that someone has is out of balance and might need to help you? And what can they expect to get once they sign up for this book? Yeah. So what they can expect from this book is they will learn more about these three myths, the myth of doing it all, the myth of productivity. And I'm going to talk about those other two because we talked about that one. And then we'll talk a little bit about the five, the five steps. I think these kind of relate to each other. Um, so the first one is the myth of doing it all. I think that's what people, when I was trying to, you know, come up with a cover for my book uh, and title and everything that people are supporting me, they know it's like, well, um, so what is balance? Is it that elephant on a ball? Is it the guy juggling? Um, is it, and I actually used to do this. I used to give seminars and I would be on a balance ball or excuse me, a balance platform no. and I would juggle. Yeah. And I say, is this oh balance people? Like, are we trying to do everything? It's silly, right? Of course. Because, drink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like a circus. No, well, because the, the, the reality is, is those are going to fall. Don't they? At one yes. point, your health might fall. At one point, your relationships might be in danger. At one point, maybe you have a work crisis. So do, are, is that, in that point, you just say, hold on, hold on, I'm going to do this thing. No, you're going to pick that up and that's going to be like gold for you. That's glass. And you're going to have to, you know, to deal with this and hope that these other pieces don't fall apart completely. But mm -hmm. I, I, I think that other people think that if they can just do everything at the same time that somehow it'll all work and they only feel balanced if they get to that per perfection point that you mentioned, Melanie, of, you know, that this is just unattainable. It is quite honestly unattainable, but so how do you fix that? Well, the myth, the myth provides actually some of, of the answers. The answer is you don't, you prioritize. Most people do not have their priorities in order, nor do they know what those really are. Mm -hmm. um, so I help people get their values, which is what I base my research in, shared values and goals with couples, help them get their own values in place, help them recognize what their spouse's values are, set goals that are based in their values, not in accomplishments, not in, I want to achieve this someday. Like this book, you guys, quite honestly, I wouldn't care if this was number one bestseller, if it didn't have a purpose. I'm not that egotistical. That's not, that's not the mission of Travis Perry or the Make Time Institute. Um, it's just help get some attention and serve other people, get on bigger stages, help people that need my help. 
So I, I think that's where it needs to come from. What are your values? What are your goals? And then how do you prioritize your time? Because as you prioritize your time, that will give you a sense of balance as you're more productive at work. Then you have more time to be at home. But so that brings up the next myth. The next myth is productivity alone. And quite honestly, I used to teach this as such, as an ad hoc. I thought, okay, I got to figure out balance. I got to figure out stress. So I actually became a time management coach. And I learned, if you guys know the name, Michael Gerber, sound familiar to you? Yeah. Yes. Myth author. Okay. Phenomenal guy. Love his work. Um, and he has some really great things for business that I 100% agree with. Um, one of his um, youngest coaches actually coached me in his method, in his time management method. And so I consider myself the grandson of Michael Gerber. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love that. Um, and so I, I understand his, his system and I help teach that. But what I found is as I was teaching mortgage brokers, attorneys, uh, business owners, financial professionals, that once I got them to be really productive at work, they were realizing, well, wait a minute, Travis, you took me from 80 to 50 hours a week. What could I do with those 50? Oh, oh my goodness. I could just be more productive at work. And they would. And I was like, pulling out my hair. No, you realize what you're doing. <laughs> like, <laughs> family needs you. Like, so, <sighs> so um, that's the issue is we can talk productivity hacks and tricks and time management all day, all day. But alone, productivity is not the magic pill. It won't mm -hmm. solve all the problems. It's just going to make you a better workaholic. And that's the key is if we don't, if we don't figure out how to fix that. So how do we fix it? Boundaries. That's key number four. You need boundaries. You need someone that can help you to set those boundaries and someone who can really enable you to um, live those boundaries and you need to set them for yourself. So what are those boundaries? Well, for example, this is a boundary. It's a, you know, it's a closet office I'm working out of, you know, in the home, home front because of COVID. Um, but these are physical boundaries that I create. But you also need time boundaries. When do you come to work? When do you leave? Even if you're at home, I dress up every day as I know you guys do. But this oh, is yeah. so that my kids look up to me and go, oh, daddy's at work, even though I come out for you know a snack or something. And, and my four-year-old doesn't say, daddy, can you read me a book right now in my castle that I made on my bunk bed? No, I'd love to, but I, I am working. And then when she understands that that work means we get to go to South Padre Island in a couple of weeks or go on a road trip, then she can understand. In fact, my door does not have a lock on it. Um, I never, my kids, my kids don't come in. They've been trained. My wife homeschools them, all six of them at home. Can I say we have perfect days? No, heavens no. Um, <laughs> but, but I created boundaries in my life that give me that purpose. So when I leave work, I'm done. When I go on vacation, I'm not at work because I don't want to be there. I want to come back fulfilled and ready to go every day and every trip. So that's, that's kind of, those are, those are the, the two myths, the four principles that I've got to, and the last one is personal development that we tackled first is that um, some people think, yeah, I just need a coach the rest of my life to help me. And I just think that the, the real effective way to do this is to have um, accountability, at least with a coach for a while, but hopefully long-term with your spouse or with a partner, somebody that can help you to stay on track so that you can truly live the system and not just 90 days later, look for a new one, like another diet. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like personal development can be a lot like yo-yo dieting for some people. It's let me just find the next fad, the next thing, the next, whatever. I don't really need to work on me. I just got to find that next hack, that next thing that's going to get me there. And Yep. Though we all love learning new things, not everything new is a good thing, but there are some surprises that come along the way, which brings me to my question that I have for you, Travis. And my question for you would be, what was the most interesting thing you learned while going through this journey? Oh, man. Um, there's so many things. I think uh, one of them that I learned, I'm going to say this for business owners, marketing is everything. <laughs> everything <laughs> is marketing. And I, I had a friend... I had a friend tell me this when I was going through my, you know, um, I started up my first business in, in 07 and he was just saying, you know, the best advice is marketing is everything. Everything is marketing. I couldn't really figure this out. Um, but I, you guys, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. Um, not that I haven't been, but quarter one was abysmal. 
quarter one of this year was the worst quarter I've ever experienced as a business owner. And it was, it was downright frustrating um, to the point where almost depressing. And maybe, yeah. maybe there was a point there that I maybe let myself go, but my wife is so good. She can help. She notices. She's like, no, let's keep you healthy. Let's come on. Let's, let's, let's get you out of this. And, and it's all at the same time, but I was thinking, I just need to write a book. If I can get the word out of what I do to people and they see the value, they will hire me. And I knew that that was there. And so um, I'm not going to say that I went from, you know, nothing to a million, but last year, you know, I had a six figure business and I think COVID just almost, it almost killed it. It almost drove everything out and almost reversed me, you know, upside down. And I know a lot of people, you know, friends, family lost jobs. They're relocating. My mom and, and, and her husband are moving to the East coast for Pete's sake. They're getting out of the Rocky mountains because, you know, there's just things that are happening as a COVID has, has really destroyed the economy, at least short term. I hope, and I know it will recover. We're Americans. We always yeah. do. But I think that's what drove me to figure out um, the marketing and help me figure the, the book and anything we do as business owners is there to drive the marketing force forward so people can know your voice. If I didn't do this, we wouldn't be connected. We wouldn't be doing this today. Um, and since then, quarter two has been more productive for me than all of 2019. I'm not saying that. To wow. Me. I'm not, but thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I, people need to hear it. That it's it possible. Yeah. And this isn't something that, Hey, I've come up with or figured out on my own. I hired a coach and I paid him a lot of money. So I, <laughs> I got to figure this out. And I figured 2000, uh, 2020, I had two choices. One stick my head in the sand and take a PPP loan or whatever those things are and, and get more in debt and probably die a slow death. Um, or two, um, and, and I'm not saying if you took a loan that you're a, a, an evil person, trust me, <laughs> I bootstrapped this. All right. I understand. Um, but two, I figured there's the other group and that is I'm, I'm going to die trying. I'm going to die trying. And so for me, okay. this book represents like if it had an animal, like it's a Phoenix. This is my Phoenix. This is my comeback year. In fact, on my goals, I even wrote, this is my comeback year. Like <laughs> McGregor. Um, you know, and I remember Tony Robbins interviewed McGregor and I was like, man, Tony worked with him. He's helping him have his comeback year. I felt like, man, 39 it was last year. I turned 39. It was, it was good. It wasn't quite where I needed to launch me to the, my next, you know, stage And 2020 just it came off with so much energy and then boom. So I thought, you know, again, I'm up against the wall. Do I put my head in the sand? Do I get going? I think what I really learned mentally was don't give up. Never, ever give up on a dream. Never, ever give up on something that's good. Keep persisting. You'll figure it out and people will help you. They'll come to your, your rescue when you ask for help. God, other people, your family, they don't want you to fail. Are you going to learn? Are you going to make mistakes? Yeah. Will you fail short term? Yeah. But unless you don't learn from it, then it is a failure. I know, Joe, you say this all the time. Unless you learn from your failures, then that's that's the failure. And I failed plenty of times and I failed sometimes, of, you know, not learning from those mistakes. And so I just see, saw, I see 2020 as my Phoenix year, my comeback year. And quite honestly, I've never been more in balance because people ask me, well, Travis, that's easy. You write a book. You do all these things. You're productive. You probably aren't living your own system. Um, newsflash, <laughs> less than 35 hours a week because my wife and my kids don't let me. I take vacations two or three you know, times a year. I try to do once a quarter because I need to spend time with them. I do other things. I volunteer in my church for 10 hours a week. Like There's other things in my life more important than work, even though I love what I do. And so I, I think that that has been some huge learning moments for me. Appreciate the question, guys. Uh, absolutely. I really love that, that you walk your walk. It's the thing I respect most about you because that you do find that. I think there's a lot of people who have gotten that marketing down and you, you dig into their material and you, you recognize that they are not living their own process. And that's why I really, I love that we did a special episode today of make time, make sales to really highlight what it looks like when someone works a system that they can have a Phoenix year and that you've added so many bonuses 
to your book launch today to allow other people to have it. Be- the world's yeah. going to be better for it. I mean, I'm so glad you pushed through the, the bonus. You get a, You get the 30 minute masterclass about the five steps to achieving balance. You also receive mastering your inbox as a video training and your bonus number two. And yeah. bonus number three is the three steps to get out of the office to help you live a better life, more balanced, to have more time, more fun with your yeah. family. And, and that's going to help people. Even if your, your office is now at your home. Especially if your office is at your home. Yeah, you're going to want to get out now. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. There's got to be a way to figure it out, right? How do I get out of it? And even if that means like you're like, like Travis is, Dr. Travis is here. He's in a closet office. He converted a room into an office in his home because it also gives him that sanctuary of that's the office. When I'm not there, I'm not at the office because there's nothing worse than being that person that when you're at the beach, you're thinking about the office. When you're at the office, you're thinking about the beach because it pulls you in different directions, which doesn't allow you to be engaged or present in either and I think that's the best gift we can give somebody is the gift of presence, being there in that moment, just like we're together, all of us together in this moment, every week, no matter what. And just like when I'm with my wife, I'm with my wife. I'm not looking at my phone. I'm, right. not, I'm not waiting to see who's going to call me. In fact, I will straight not answer phone calls during times with her or with anybody else because I'm in that moment. We respect it. We respect it. Yeah. I, had, yeah. I had one more question I wanted to ask. Yeah. I know she had a couple more too, but I have another question I want to ask. And so my next question would be that I, I, through this, I know you interviewed a lot of people for this book. And so my question to you would be, who was your favorite person to interview? Oh, man. Um, besides you, Joe? Uh, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> you know, I interviewed a lot of really great people. Um, I have a lot of contacts from the financial services arena and area. And I think there's a lot of really unique perspectives and, and, and struggles that they have. And, and that's where I got my start as as a financial advisor. So I really connect with a lot of financial advisors. Um, But for whatever reason, as soon as you asked me that, Joe, um, I thought of um, a guy who is a financial advisor in Austin. He's actually a client of mine. And now, um, but as we were working together, you know, he brought his wife on the phone and was like, this is my problem. <laughs> she needs to help me. You know, she's been telling me I need to get better work-life balance forever. He's a soccer enthusiast. Um, but, you know, she told me uh, we'll go on vacation and he's on his phone doing his emails back at work, even though we're at the game and he loves soccer. Like there's nothing more than football, um, you know, European football than, than, you know, that he loves. That's it. Like he just loves that. He lives for it. Um, but yet when he comes home to his office, guess what he had playing in his office? Soccer. Soccer. All uh. day long. <laughs> and I thought, isn't this an interesting thing? Just like you guys told me, like, um, we struggle to be present, don't we? We put yeah, we pictures of the beach on our Facebook pages. Like, hey, wouldn't that be awesome? On our virtual Zoom beach, background. Yeah. And then what do we do? We go to the, yeah, our Zoom backgrounds. <laughs> Touche. Oh, wait, let me change mine. No, just um, and Oh, then, we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> no, no, no. We are uh, now at the beach. Wait, I'm disappearing. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, wait. We're, lo- we're losing you, Joe. We're losing Joe? him to the beach. We lost him. But I think. Sorry, that, I had to go take a dip. <laughs> I think interviewing. Um, Raul is his first name is phenomenal. Um, but then, then seeing, uh, how, how we do this, like going to the beach, I was in South Padre with my family. Uh, this is a fantastic little place in Texas where you can get a little piece of paradise. And while we were there, I just actually was quite amazed looking up and down the beach. I know people are there for all different reasons. And I told my kids, Hey, we're not judging people why they're at the beach. They're at the beach because they choose to, they can but I was still surprised at how many people were doing this the entire time, like under their <laughs> canopy, under their umbrella, just looking at their phone and okay, I get it. Um, maybe they're reading a book. I give it to them. That's cool. That's cool. Again, no judgment zone, but I just wonder, are we trying to be at the beach to have this, I went to the beach thing and, and, uh, and then, you know, come back to show people and working away, answering emails, um, do phone calls or whatever and then we show up to work and post pictures of being at the beach for a minute that's that picture and then get back to working on the beach like it, you don't get that separation I think that's where Raul really missed is that separation between he loves soccer and he tried to have it when he was at work but when he actually went to the games you know it it, it was tough for him to let go of work and my my gift to to him is helping him stop that 
help him fix that. And uh, he's been able to since then tell me, Travis, I've, I know the games are rescheduled, but he's planning next year for like a four week vacation to just go be with his family, go to the European cup. And he's leaving his phone at home. He's leaving his laptop at home. He's like, I'm not even going to take it. I've learned my lesson. I can see the difference. He doesn't watch soccer, you know, while he's trying to communicate and and work because of how much distraction it is. Like, it's just that being present um, is, has been so huge. And so seeing his transformation from the interview has been phenomenal. That's awesome. Isn't it? It's probably the, the biggest joy that we get having our, our, our business with always good and, and helping businesses really create processes with their sales team and, and help them implement and, and watch them take their sales organization and their business to a whole new level, or even the individual contributors we coach. It's those moments of the ahas they have. I, I've never found anything to give me that much of a rush uh, in anything that, I can, that I've been able to achieve in life yet uh, professionally is that moment of I helped somebody just break through to realize, oh crap, that's how I can do it. And when they do, seeing the change that comes afterwards, man, there's, it, the rewards are amazing. And that's what makes it all worthwhile, right? It's, it's not enough that we figured something out for ourselves. We want to see somebody else take what we've learned and use it. I want to see that. I want someone to shave off the 10 years and 20 years that it took the two of us to figure something out. I want to find someone who was me 10 or 20 years ago and be able to say, here, do this thing and you will have a fulfillment unlike you ever thought possible. And that's really what feeds us. And I love that you have that example because I think every great coach is like that. They, If they can just remember that one person who used it and was better for it, then our purpose is fulfilled. Absolutely. And I'll tell you this. Balance is achieved. That's it. It's achieved. Like you're achieving it. You're getting after it. And I, and I, this is on purpose. This, this imbalance is on purpose. Like this is kind of how we live our life. We're constantly out of balance. We're in a flow. It's more of a flow than it is a balance um, necessarily. Yeah. Just, hey, we're at work. We're good. Now we're at home. We're at work or at home. I think that's really important to know. But um, if people take advantage of those bonuses, I actually, there's one other extra bonus there and it's time with me. Um, I'll kind of, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'll let people kind of germinate with that and wonder, okay, how can I get some free? Cause it's free time and it's because of the book. It's because of this movement. Cause I want to do what, how I want to, you know, be able to help people. And I know right now my calendar is filling up as we speak um, because yeah. of, of that offer. People are taking advantage of spending time with me and consulting with me on how they can improve their situation. So it is there people take, you know, get the book, get the bonus um, achieve balance, make time, make more sales. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks for letting me be interviewed today, guys. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, thank Remember, you for being here with us. Everyone find this balance at Travis Perry, P A R R Y.com forward slash free book. And today only make sure you sign up to get on Travis's calendar. Like he said, that is limited. I saw that Travis. I know that it's only if you qualify and there's a lot of overachievers out there who need to make time work for them so they can achieve balance too. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you for making the time for us today. Yes. And thank you to everybody who tuned into the make time, make sales show today for this special edition as we were interviewing our one and only Dr. Travis Perry. Yep. I'm excited Congrats on already being in the top five, being number four. We're going to keep pushing hard, everybody. Let's get this to number one. Let's, let's get, do let's it. make, let's make Dr. Travis Perry the number one best selling author in his field because there are a lot of people that need this information. And, you know, like we say on the show every time, we are here to help you learn the art of productivity and influence to help you rise above the challenge. And I don't know of a much better book you could order for yourself to give you some of that art you need to achieve that balance. Thanks guys. I really appreciate it. And yes, it, this is the time to do it. Travisperry.com forward slash free book. Get it today. Um, it might be that your order pushes us to number one. We're, we're almost there. We really are really close. It's really exciting. Really it's close. been like Christmas. It's like <laughs> been hard to sleep last night. Like it's been so exciting, but I, I really hope that people pick it up and, and then uh, when it delivers, you know, use the principles, but beforehand, all those bonuses are going to help them already to have a much better balanced life. So thanks guys. Appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. We'll see you again, everybody on Wednesday for another episode of the make time, make sales show. 
I'm your host, Mr. Always Good, with our guest, Mrs. Always Good as a host, and of course, Dr. Travis Perry. See you all on Wednesday. Thank you, guys.